But what does it mean that we were made to drink of one spirit? It means if we're spiritual, we all drink from the one Holy Spirit. And in order to express unity as a result of our union, we must drink from one spirit from the same word of God. Now, the reason that I love the doctrine of the unity of the royal family of God, I'm going to show you why this morning. When we were saved, we were all crucified, we were all buried, we were all raised up from the dead spiritually, we were all ascended, we are all seated, and we are all hid in Christ, we are all new creatures, old things have passed away for all of us, all things have become new for all of us, we all have mercies new every morning, compassions that fail not, and it's the same for everybody. Now Jesus prays in John 17 five times that we'll be one as the Trinity's one. Now, we're going to take the practicality of that experiential unity when it begins to become a reflection of truth in each believer placed as members in particular in the body of Christ. Now, number one, I must enter into the unity of faith. The unity of faith, Ephesians 4.13 through 15 we all come to the unity of faith. Now, the unity of faith is when we have a pastor teacher who teaches correct doctrine through grace adjustment, and he communicates in life. He believes the whole counsel of God. He doesn't communicate or live in fragmentation of truth. And he has the right motivation, the right attitude, the right decisions, the right communication, and the right action. Now, he, we enter into the unity of faith. For example, we believe in prayer. So in the unity of faith, we believe God answers prayer. We believe in soul winning. We believe if what we sow, we'll reap, and we'll believe, we believe if we go out and sow the precious seed, weeping, we'll doubtless bring sheaves with us rejoicing. We believe this because we have the unity of the faith toward the promises of God. Our unity of faith toward divine guidance. A unity of faith in relaxing in faith rests. The unity of faith, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God, and God's people have the unity of faith. Now, we must have unity with the Trinity, and that's what John 17 is teaching. For example, I must have unity with God the Father's plan for my life. When Paul got expelled out of the coast with Barnabas and had to go to Iconium, he had to have one mind and one heart with Jesus Christ toward the Father's plan. Unity of the personal plan God has for the individual. That means if you're single and you've been praying for a guy and you don't have it, and you're anxious, your anxiety reveals you don't have unity with the plan. So your heart's off. And let not you think you're going to receive anything from God. Because you have two hearts in James 1.8 and Hosea 10.2. Oh, I just want Jimmy to notice me. I thought we were going to go together, or Harold or Bill or Keith or Raymond. And I need this meaning for it. No, you don't. Listen, if you needed it, you'd have it. That's based upon God providing all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. That's based upon God guiding your feet into peace. Now, if you needed it, the guy would come, be sent to you, or you'd be sent to the guy. And he'd want you. So you don't need it. You need a meaningful relationship with God, but you're not living in unity of the Father's plan for your personal relationship. Therefore, you don't have a meaning personal relationship because you have the interference 
of wanting something that God's plan says, not now, honey, 